guys. It's Tabitha with Nick Harper Manor here. Happy Friday, or Friday, as we call it around here. I have Haley with me today, our oldest daughter, and we are going to play with polymer clay today and make some polymer clay bowls and beads. So, I'm excited. I hope you guys are excited. Tom, will you flash a picture of those polymer clay bowls so that you guys can see them? This is what we're gonna make today. I lost my little examples. I had a couple of them sitting around here I was gonna show you, but I don't know exactly where they went, but they're, you know, now you have a picture of them. So, awesome possum. It's Friday and we have Missy with Happy Groundhog Studio here with us. Sean uh, may be able to come, it may not be. His Facebook is currently in Spanish. So we're running with some technical difficulties. We have a grumpy Tom who's trying to get some things to work. It is a Friday that feels like a Monday around here. I don't know if anybody else on earth can relate, but it is a, it's a Monday. Monday? <laughs> a Monday. Monday. I don't know. So yeah. Welcome back, guys. It's week five, and we are working on project three. So today, um, we're going to play with clay, but first, we're going to chat about some stuff. I wasn't here live with you guys yesterday because we were filming some more tutorials for the subscription site, so I didn't get a chance to chat with you guys yesterday, so it feels like I have lots of things to talk about today. So let's hop into it. Um, membership site, tentatively scheduled to launch Friday next week. So that will be like a, you know, a, a week prior to where it will launch every month. So it would be live the first of the month, um, new content, first of the month, every month. But we are trying to launch it a week early for May content just to get in there so that you guys aren't missing any art between the end of week six and live. So it's looking like we're looking like we might make it. Um, I'm going to have some information out to everybody um, beginning Monday next week with, you know, pricing and all of the details that you guys are looking for. I do want to say that it this first month is going to be six projects, but eight lessons. Two of the projects are two-part projects. Um, and basically every month we're going to focus on drawing, painting, sculpting, and play okay so there will always be an opportunity to make something creative that you can interact with that's a sort of play i think art and play go really well together so um this you know first project for the first month is going to be a really cool play one that will be valuable to you in our time of social distancing so Make sure you're subscribed to our emails about that. The way you can do that is to go to mcharpermanor.com, wait for it to flash up on the screen a little bit, and click subscribe to the emails for that. That's how you get that content. Um, what else do we have going on? Birthdays. You guys have asked so many awesome questions about the virtual birthday parties that we are going to be launching in May as well. So we will not be booking any birthday parties um, or anything until May 1st as well. So May 1st will be the first day that I give you guys opportunities to book slots for those. Those are going to be live with me. So they will only be um, available in one hour chunks and they will be, you know, alternating. So I won't, I won't have infinite amounts of spaces available for them, but we will, I will have a schedule and we can schedule them in and they will be available May 1st. I'm testing out some of the projects that we can do right now. The projects that we're looking at are slime. I know, really slime, yeah, because it's that important. Slime, painting, polymer clay. Is there another project that you guys would like to see us consider? I'm looking, you know, we're gonna run most of this through our Zoom Pro account. So that means that we'll be able to, you know, go longer than that 40 minute cutoff that they normally have for Zoom. So we can, um, play for up to an hour on these and we just need to work on projects that you guys can get the supplies for yourself and your party guests. Um, so the slime um, recipes that I'm testing out are things that you can buy, a pre-mixed activator, fun stuff like that. We've got some cool smelly activators, some glow-in-the-dark activators, fun stuff like that that we are testing out this weekend. So I'll have more info for you guys for that to come. But yeah, you guys have been asking great questions about the birthday parties and we're working on that too. Um, next thing, 
storage options. You guys are all so smart and you love keeping your art. And I've had so many questions about what do I do with all these canvases? Oh my goodness. Speaking straight to my heart as somebody who is inundated with canvases herself, I will tell you exactly what we do. So we have some options, all right? First things first, when I suggest you guys use the canvas panels, that's these, okay? Not the stretched canvas around the little frame. The panels are awesome because they're thin. You can stack them, you can still frame them. You can do all the things you can do with a stretched canvas, but it's in a panel, okay? But that panel can also drop right into a binder, right? With sleeve protectors. These little, you know, these little plastic filmy guys. You can drop eight by 10 canvases straight into these, okay? And you can go through and, you know, put, you can have a quarantine binder of your art. You can just go through and, oh, look at that time I made a little town and look at all these things. Each kid could have a binder. This one that I have right here is just a one inch binder and it's rocking like 30 sheets in it, no problem. And even these little canvases, I mean, they're in here pretty well. You can double side them, but those canvas panels fit great in here. An eight by 10 canvas panel drops down in there perfectly. You've got these little, you know, pouches over here. You can throw other little guys, but I suggest a binder with these um, clear sheet protectors, okay? Those are super, super helpful, super inexpensive. And if you wanted to do like a whole family binder or like a yearly binder, you could get like a two or three inch binder and just buy a bunch of those drop in little pouch protector guys. Um, so the canvas panels are great if you really want something nice and firm that you can paint on that feels like a normal canvas. Alternatively, you can buy acrylic pads, okay? These come in sheets, all right? So these are sheets of paper that feel like canvas. Um, now there are two different types of these. Today, earlier this morning, I linked on the page a type for you that is actual canvas sheets. So those are pieces of canvas cloth that are gessoed three times, and then they are ready for you to paint on. That's gonna be firm because of the gesso, but it is a actual canvas sheet. It has cotton thread through there to make the canvas. When you are searching for that particular type, if that's what you want, you wanna look for cotton canvas acrylic pad or acrylic um, pad cotton or 100% cotton acrylic canvas um, paper, something to that extent. You want to make sure it has the word cotton in there because that's going to be the one with the real fiber. If you don't like, so you will get some fraying at the top of those. We talk, I talked with one of the, my friends today about fray stay um, and that stuff kind of keeps it from fraying at the top. You can also get your X-Acto knife in there really nice and cut out the top so that it leaves that little glue bead intact and it won't fray as much there too. I like that because it feels like real canvas. Those, um, when you paint on them, they don't warp. They just, they, it feels like real canvas, but it's thin. You can mail those. Those are nice for mailing. Those are nice to send to people. Um, you know, our friend Emily, who wanted to send off some of this huge amount of art she has from her four kids that have done every project with us. Um, I get that. I totally get that. And Emily, I was thinking too, what you can do is you can take that canvas off of the stretcher trim it down and mail them that way too. So that's another good way to do it. If you just want to take them off the stretcher and mail them to somebody, you can roll it up, you can fold it up. But um, if you take that canvas off the stretcher, it's going to be just like a sheet anyway. So that's another option. But there's also canvas paper, which I know we just talked about the cotton canvas paper. This is just regular paper. Okay. So this paper is super thick. I don't know, Tom, if you can get an overhead on like, on this and zoom it really well. I don't know if you guys will be able to see as well, but this has all of the texture of canvas and this paper is so, so thick and durable that it almost paints like, it almost feels like canvas. Um, it has a little give to it also, but the thing is, is that it will wrinkle and it doesn't, it doesn't absorb any water. It 
is going to feel it's going to be like repellent a little bit like when you're actually painting on paper versus painting on canvas you know how when we're painting on canvas i always have you guys wet your canvas and stuff like that to make your paint move around you can't really do that with this paper it, it sits up on top because it's trying to keep the paper from warping so that is you know that's another alternative but you have to try them both and see what you like so i've linked the actual canvas um paper that has the cotton in it i've linked that on the on the facebook page today and you guys will have um the links to that if you're interested and trying that out I think that one's due in April 30th or something like that so it gives you you know about a about a week to continue playing with regular canvas but those are some things I've had some questions I just wanted to share that stuff with you guys um, but yeah those are some good questions you guys keep asking good questions I'll keep trying to answer them the best that I can Missy who we got out there today what is going on we have Stephanie from New York says hi, hi. Aaron and Jacob from Corning New York. All our uh, New York friends. I hope you guys are all okay up there. Aiden in West, from Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Kristen's here for day 23. Day 23. Izzy from Brighton, Michigan. Hi, guys. Um, Emery and Lucy. Very Let's see, cool. Landon and Wiley from Maryland. Hi, guys. Linda and Faith from Ohio. Oh, hello, Ohio friends. We have lots. Let's see. Stephanie from New York. Lucy, Sally, and so Jacob from, from New York. Wisconsin. Another and Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Another Virginia. Virginia. And a lot of people love your shirt. Oh, thanks, guys. It's the <laughs> Meowna Lisa. It's my favorite sweatshirt. Today was a comfy day. It's the Meowna Lisa. One of my favorites. And Sean's Think back in English. Sean's back in English. <laughs> I've lost English today. All right, so let's go ahead and make some art, guys. Um, we are going to use polymer clay today. So you're going to want your polymer clay if you've got it. If you don't have polymer clay today, you can just sculpt along. Um, your projects may not be as resilient as they would be if you were using polymer clay, but feel free to sculpt along. And when you get access to polymer clay, use it in the way in which we did. Um, I am going to be using for my little bowls, um, these little Pyrex oven safe bowls. If you have little oven safe bowls, they're great. Um, if you don't have oven safe bowls, but you do have a mason jar ring, these are able to be put in the oven too. And you can make a more little shallow bowl. You can kind of like form him into the sides there. We use these with air dry clay um, in the studio sometimes with the kids when they make little textured bowls or dishes. But one of these little mason jar rings, lids that'll work too you just want something that is oven safe that can kind of like help you form your bowl and, and give it a little lip to it and let it sit there muffin um tins? muffin tins perfect yes that's why i have all the smart people with me you know um but yeah just something that you can kind of shape your little bowl and let it sit like that while you're baking it i like to leave it in there um if you have big biscuit cutters or cookie cutters big huge ones you can use those too to cut your little bowl shape out those are helpful so we have these just in case um you want something to roll with so a rolling pin if you have it now i will say wooden rolling pins do tend to get stuck to polymer clay so if you have a wooden rolling pin um you might just have to work a little extra hard with it maybe take some wax paper and put between what you're rolling and kind of roll them because the wood the wood grains do stick a little bit to that um we have just some little modeling um sculpting tools and a little a little cutter knife for where we trace and go around our um, circle you can use a butter knife you can use anything you have it's totally fine we are going to use bamboo skewers, like little shish kebab skewers to put our beads on just to make sure that we've got, you know, a decent enough bead hole size. We're going to use, we're going to make the beads from what's left over from our edges of our bowl because we have to roll out a pretty decent thickness of um, clay and a big slab for our bowl. So you don't want to waste all that beautiful like marbling that you've got around the edges. That's why we're going to make some beads with them. So we are going to play today. I think that's all we've got. Did I mention everything? Do a quick birthday shout out. Quick birthday shout out. Whose birthday do we have? We have Chloe will be is 11 in Prince Happy New Jersey. birthday, Chloe. And tomorrow, Ella will be 8. Oh, happy birthday, Ella. Happy birthday, ladies. And anybody else that we didn't mention, happy birthday to you too. All right. So let's pick what colors we want to start with. Do you know what colors you might want? 
Show that bowl. Show that bowl one more time, Tom. Since I don't have one to show. Um, those little bowls, these are what we're going to be making, okay? So we're going to pick some of our favorite colors that we want to um, put together, and we're going to kind of marble them together, and then we are going to create, um, you know, a slab that we can cut a circle from, or a heart, whatever you choose, and make a bowl, okay? So I think I want, hmm, what colors? You pick some colors. I was thinking yellow, this color, and like that color. Yeah. That color. Here, just take some punks off. So we want to mix a little bit of this with some white because we're going to need a decent amount, okay? We're going to need the amount of like, I would say like the size of like a golf ball or ping pong ball. So you kind of want to, you might want to mix those together a little bit, okay? But yeah, start start picking the colors that you like and what you want and soften it up. Remember, polymer clay is hard, okay? I'm going to take my rings off for this. Um, polymer clay is hard, and you have to soften it up with your hands. So we can chat a little bit while we do that, too. If some people have some questions about softening their clay. Yeah. Somebody does have air dry clay that they feel like is getting a little dried out. Air dry clay? Um, so air dry clay is a totally different animal. Uh, polymer clay will never dry out completely. Um, that's why, because you have to bake it. Um, air dry clay dries with air. It dries pretty quickly. Um, the air dry clay, you can reconstitute with a little bit of water. You don't want to go too crazy with water, but you can take, um, you know, my tip for when I put the air dry clay away is to take a wet paper towel and I kind of spritz it a little bit with some essential oils like lemon essential oil or something like that to kind of keep it like antimicrobial so it doesn't get funky. But I take a wet paper towel and I kind of put it in there with my air dry clay to kind of keep the moisture level in that bag good so it doesn't get cracky and crumbly. So you can do that next time. This time, just take a spray bottle and squirt a little bit of water into it and try to, you know, mush it back out, kind of smooth them out. And try that and see how see how that goes. It might help. Um, as far as with the air dry clay, um, with the color marbling and stuff, you're just gonna have to paint that on later. So, all right. I'm getting there. Yeah, polymer clay just takes a little bit to it takes a little bit to work. So that's why today we're just gonna we're gonna be working it a little bit. See how it goes. You got it, girl. Just cracked my hand. <laughs> The nice thing about polymer clay and making these bowls, though, is that we're just taking little pieces and we can we can make it marbled and we're kind of making it marbly anyway. So not kind of, we are marbling it anyway. So it, it already looks marbly. Yeah, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, if you have newer clay, you can mix it with the older clay to kind of help out that older clay. Uh, last time we played with polymer clay, I showed you guys my little mineral oil hack. You can take um, a little bit of baby oil, mineral oil, whatever you would like to call it, um, and you can add a couple drops of that into an old crusty clay, and that'll kind of bring them back to life, make them a little bit more, a little more squishy. But yeah, we're just going to have to kind of mold a little bit with this. We have some international friends today from Brussels and Ooh, from Italy. Hey guys, how are you guys doing? I hope Italy is getting better. I don't, admittedly, I don't watch a lot of news. Um, I'm a I'm a big empath, and it's a lot, it's hard for me to watch a lot of news. But I hope you all are doing okay. I heard some, you know, some some hardships in Italy. So I hope you all are doing good. All right, just keep squishing. That's the that's the name of the game here. Just keep squishing. Just keep squishing. Disney reference. What movie? Just keep squishing. It would be got just keep swimming, but she says just keep squishing. She's quizzing you all. I am. What are you laughing about, Miss? <laughs> Do we have anybody out there doing anything fun this weekend? Um, you know, finding cool, unique ways to play. Inside, socially distant. Okay. So he's doing better. How's yours? Oh, yours looks great. Looking awesome. Okay. 
Tommy Tom Tom, I'm going to give this to you and let you continue working that while I work the next color. He's just going to keep squishing it for me while I go on to the next color. I need, I need a bright color. I'm going to go with this pink. Yeah, that's what Ooh, France thinking. and Portugal checking in as well. Hey, guys. That's <laughs> so cool. And Kelly got your reference to Finding Nemo. <laughs> there Good. you go. There you go. Oh, Whoever what? doesn't know that, you need to go watch some mm -hmm. movies right now. What time is it over in Europe? I wonder. It's not 1 p.m. It's not it's not the after it's not lunch hour over there. Okay. I feel like it's after dinner time. Maybe a, dinner time. A tip for when they're it's sticking to the table. Uh, cover your work surface with something like wax paper. We use Teflon sheets um, or paper, but if it's sticking to the table um, a lot. It, you know, just scrape it up, I guess. Um, <laughs> we really, we really just use something like nonstick, like wax paper or Teflon sheets. Um, paper plate. Paper plates, great. A plastic party tablecloth. Um, aluminum foil. Aluminum would foil work. would probably work fine. Yeah. Did you lose some? Yeah, you're good. Just like tiny pieces. Yeah. So. You know, polymer clay, depending on the brand that you get, you will find that brands do kind of matter in polymer clay. Um, you know, and there are different levels. Most polymer clays have, like, base, basic levels and, um, you know, upper, you know, premium lines and things like that. It's most art supplies really do uh, when you get into, like, finer art supplies and stuff like that. You've got... Entry level, which is like student grade, and you've got artist grade. Um, so your polymer clay is going to be like that too. So if you get, you know, the least expensive polymer clay, and this is this is just a general rule. This is not a hard and fast rule, because I have found some gems that um, are not the most expensive one. But if you get, you know, just the basic one, it's going to tend to dry out a little quicker. Um, it's going to tend to be a little more brittle. So if you're having a really hard time with what you are working with, maybe try a different brand or maybe try a step up on the level. Um, you know, a lot of times the polymer clay has to do with resilience, something that you're going to use. Like Missy and I were just talking about, there's there's the uh, Sculpey, the, uh, which one is it? Uh, Super Sculpey. Super Sculpey is the one for like doll making, where if you drop it, it's not going to bust. So, you know, here, trade me again. Thanks, Tom. Holy holy. There you go. <laughs> so, you know, there are different, there's different levels. Maybe um, try a different container to keep them in, like an airtight container. Uh, you know, that's just kind of the name of the game with polymer clay. If you've got it sitting around for a while. When you first take it out of the package, it feels great. Um, the second or third time around, it needs a little love. At least ours here in the studio do. Hand it, hand it to your dad on a Zoom call. Yeah, hand it to your dad on a Zoom call. Here you go. Soften up the clay. Here, Mom, me. I know you're I know you've got a meeting. Can you uh play with this clay for me for a second while I'm working on it? And I've got hot hands. He does. He's a heater. So that's he's a heater. It, it feels helps. easy for me. <laughs> but yeah, I got my heater from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're a heater too, girl. But that um, the warmth from your hand is really gonna help break it down. Yeah. I prefer the Sculpey brand personally. Um, I do have some of this Michaels brand stuff here with me, but it it dries out quicker. Um, you know, it's eighty seven. You know. 287 versus you know the 312 or whatever for the other pack but you know sometimes it depends on what color is available too i'll buy whatever brand has the color i want so we just, have people doing some fun stuff this weekend yeah we're doing a girls night with pedicures and face masks oh my goodness that sounds so fun uh building a fire for girl scouts oh yay homework homework <laughs> painting kindness rocks Oh, I love and decorating. Uh, let's see, we're doing the daughter's decorations on our walls. Awesome. Painting doors, and um, we're gonna do one more shout out. Yeah. I think it's Shy and Yohav in Montreal. We'd <gasps> like you to say hi. Hey guys, <laughs> Shy and Yohav. I probably butchered your names. We might have, but that's okay. We're trying, and we're saying hey. 
And Isabel said, oh, they are in Portugal, and it's 626 there. Oh, hey, okay, okay. So mm-hmm. it is after dinner. Yeah, my my uh, passport that's about to run out was from a trip to Portugal that we never got to take. So that's... Ironically, Sean said that it was in Portuguese. Facebook. Oh, Facebook was in Portuguese <laughs> this morning. Okay. Okay, okay. All right, so we've got some colors mixed up. How are you doing on your colors? Yours looks good. All right. Don't abandon ship, Tommy. Keep rolling. Keep rolling. Nope. Soft. <laughs> I can do it. How much no, I mean, I, not soft, but I want the color, you know, oh, to be you uniform color. color. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. I thought you wanted it marble. Oh, no, I'm going to marble with it. Oh. I'm going to marble. I'm going to put the blue and pink and green together. So I want it all one color. And that's the thing, like, it doesn't have to be completely 100% uniform, but once you're, you know, in that neighborhood. So I like to squish it down to make like a pancake. And that way I can kind of break up these little harder bits and then kind of twist and push it all back together. And that helps the color get evenly distributed through there. So just squish in and squish in and squish in. And it'll eventually break down. Um, so I have some, you know, some old brittle green that I'm throwing in here with this white. And our friend from Madisonville said he'll be waking up, having coffee, and walking around again. <laughs> <laughs> waking up, having coffee, walking around. Sounds about right. So I am going to Zoom call with one of my friends tonight because we miss each other's faces. So that's fun. Um, I did hang out with some of my craftcation friends for a hot minute the other night um, until the kids started yelling. So, yeah, there was that. I mean, Zoom calls are fun. I I never in a, in a million years would have thought that that would be my fun for, you know, oh, I'm going to hang out with my friend through a computer. But, hey, we're doing it. Thank you, Missy. So, Yeah. Whatever ways you find to have fun, I hope you do something cool. Kim said they're doing a virtual bingo tonight with the Jimmy Fund for Cancer Research. Oh, that sounds that's awesome. Cool. Virtual bingo. So do do they, like, print off the bingo cards? I mean, yeah, I, so. I wonder how you would all have different bingo cards. Or you all win. Everybody wins. <laughs> bingo. <laughs> all right. So I have three colors that are looking pretty good. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make three little logs, okay? And, you know, and these might be a little thick. I might, I'm going to break these in half, and we're going to see how that goes. I might have a little, I might have overestimated how much I needed. I'm going to take three little logs, okay, and I'm going to roll them down to nice coils, okay? So snakes, make some snakes. Make some little snakies. And then just lay him off to the side when you've got your thinner one done. And then go on to another one. I see you copying me. What? <laughs> I'm just playing. Good. Because I wasn't copying, bro. Whatever. She's too cool to copy. Well, this is I cute. Am. Nicole said her and her friend both went through Starbucks drive through in separate cars. And then sat in the parking lot and had coffee together in separate cars. Oh, oh I want to have that. Starbucks so coffee with my friends in cars. <laughs> I just want to have Starbucks coffee, really. Yeah. I didn't know they were still open. I thought they were not open. Maybe I was misinformed. I know there's a lot of things not open. Tom went to pick up one of my Michael's orders <laughs> the other day. And some lady just, like, walks right up and, like, walks through the door, like, bam. Like, Oh, I guess they're not closed. They're not open anymore. <laughs> I feel like I would have been that lady. Oh, like she like, just tried to walk in. Yeah, like, like she was just going to Michael's. <laughs> just, oh, go shop. And she turned around like a sad panda. Oh, like, oh, that's so sad. She couldn't get her crab supplies. <laughs> she just had to go back out to the parking lot and order on her phone, and then get it curbside. Well, she was she was kind of older, so I don't know if she. Oh, that makes that. it even more sad. <laughs> oh, people need their crab supplies. <laughs> Okay, so I've got three little ropes here. Now comes the fun part, okay? I'm going to take these three little ropes, and I am going to twist them, okay? Just kind of put them together and kind of twist them. Doop-de-doop. 
Oh, look at that. Oh, that looks so it looks beautiful. like a unicorn's horn. I just want to <laughs> leave it. It's so beautiful. Look. look. Da, 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 da. Unicorn horn. Yeah. I think it's perfect. I'm almost there. All right. I love this. But I'm going to twist it a little bit more. And then I'm probably going to fold them in half. I want that pink not to be next to the pink. I'm going to go there. And I'm going to twist it one more time. And then I'm going to flatten them out. Okay. So you just want to kind of integrate those colors all together. And then we're going to, we're just going to squeeze them on out. We're going to roll them on out. I love when you do, you start your technique, it gets real quiet online. Yeah. You love <laughs> mine. And just twist and flip them over. Oh, it's so cool. And you just want to kind of roll it together and roll it, roll them out into a little pancake, okay? And keep moving. If you rolled them too much in one way to where he's really, really long and not wide, good news. It's all mixed together. You can just rip a chunk off and stick it to the side and roll again. I think you can use these for our 90s theme. Craft yes, our 90s theme. With our, <laughs> with our friend Nicole, our yeah, 80s and 80s 90s theme. theme. Yes, with our Nicole Watson <laughs> friend. Yes, we're going to do this. Earrings or something. <laughs> yes. Yes, I am actually going to make earrings after we're done here today. <laughs> I have some, I have some, uh, some olive and mustard that I oh, found, you know, colors. these are my favorite colors, right? Some little colors. olive and mustard that I'm going to make myself some earrings with when we're done. I love polymer clay jewelry. I can do it. All right. I'm almost there, Tabby. I'm You're doing great. There. I'm going to pull this off. He got a little, a little bit wider than I would like him. So I'm going to kind of move him around to the side and kind of roll that over. Flip him, roll again. And if you're, you know, rolling it and you're like, mm, I don't like the way these colors look. I'm, you know, I wish I would have had more of this here. You can take a little pinch off here and be like, oh, here we go. Now we got some green up in there. We got a little, you know, break up the color a little bit. Just throw them on and then roll them out. You can kind of choose where you put those colors. Roll them right into your lap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then just keep flipping it because that way you'll get, you know, a nice even thickness. If you have some kids that are maybe rolling a little too thick or a little too thin, go over to your bookshelf and grab two kids books that are maybe like, you know, between an eighth of an inch or maybe a little less and you can put two books that are the same size, size on each side of what you're rolling, and you can kind of um, use those as guides to roll over top of, and that'll help you make an even slab. That's my slab hack. So you could take two of those like level one easy reader books or whatever and sit them on the side, and then make sure that your rolling pin or your hairspray can or your jar or whatever you're using, those will guide it, and your little rolling pin will sit right on top of those books and help keep your slab even. And that really helps with little kids to make sure that one side's not way thicker than the other on a slab. Actually, I think I'm liking this side more than the other side now. You keep flipping and working and see which side you like. Oh my gosh, I like them both. How do you pick? How do you pick which side you like the best? How's yours? You're I'm still mixing, there. girl. It's time to get twisted. You got help, okay? <laughs> I did this. All right, you want me to roll your? You want me to roll your little? You want me to roll your little coils for you? Yeah. How's everybody else doing out there? Everybody else catching up? Doing good? Got some blue coils for the Haley. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Make sure that you're um, giving yourself enough. Okay. Let me see how much pink you have. Yeah, that's good. Looks good, girl. Okay, there's one coil. One coil. It's gonna do it. One, three. And then there's your other one. My little guy's sliding all around. I might just forget this guy. He's driving me nuts. There we go. Agreed. Roll on the paper. Now, sometimes with paper, I will say, if you're rolling on paper, 
sometimes that paper will dry your clay out too. So if you're working with already dry clay, that paper is absorbent. It's gonna kind of dry your clay out too. So there you go, girl. All right, back to back to my little guy. All right, so I am pretty much rolled out the way I like it. It looks pretty even, okay? So mine's about, I don't know, a little under an eighth of an inch thick, okay? So whatever, when we bake, we are baking per quarter inch, okay? So these are pretty thin today, these little bowls. So we're gonna bake per quarter inch. I would say mine's around an eighth of an inch, okay? So we're gonna bake this for half of the time. We're baking it based on thickness. All right, so 15 minutes per quarter inch, I believe. Is that right, miss? Is that like 15? Mm -hmm. I think it was 15 minutes per quarter inch. Yeah, that's it. We're going to go like eight minutes. Make sure it's all the way heated up. Make sure your oven's all the way like at temperature. Don't put it in and start. Make sure it's totally preheated. Um, and you won't have to go the full 15 minutes on this one probably. Just watch it. I have some friends that know it burns. They sent me some pictures of their burnt polymer clay mm -hmm. charms. And it was a sad time, but you know, I, I cried with you. Um, if it does burn though, you can paint it. You can paint it. You can paint that burned charm. Oh, look awesome. at Yeah, it does. All right, flip them in half. And do it again. There you go. And then just maybe one more time. There you go. And kind of like clump them into a little thing and roll them on out. All right, Haley's sloth mode. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you how we're going to do sorry, this, okay? Sir. That's all right. If you have a cookie cutter or a biscuit cutter or something like that, you just, and you're done, right? But I'm going to pretend like we don't have this. And I'm going to use a bowl, a cup, whatever, and I'm going to trace around this guy, okay? So I'm just going to find the spot that I like the best and I'm going to cut my clay off. So I'm going to go around and around and I'm just gonna score the edge against the edge here. I'm gonna cut my clay off, all right? Do, 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 do. Come around this side. And basically, just trim all the way around. I mean, depending on the thickness of your glass or your bowl that you're using, you could probably use it like a cookie cutter too. All right. So that's that, he's trimmed. Then I'm just going to kind of touch these edges and kind of take these frayed edges that are a little bit dirty. I'm just going to kind of smooth those out a little bit with my fingers. You can use um, warm water with polymer clay to, to kind of like smooth edges if you really want to. I don't, I don't find that it's super helpful. Some people suggested in some of the tutorials that I've seen. I don't, I don't love it, but you can use it if you're having like a big crack that you don't feel like is coming back together very well. You can also use uh, that mineral oil too. I think your fingers work just fine though. And I like when it's a little bit, you know, unique around the edges. It gives a character. Not everything in art and life is perfect, right? Especially, especially not in art. If it was all perfect and it all looked the same, it would be so boring. All right, so once you've got your little edges all smoothed out, then you decide what kind of shape you want your little bowl to have, okay? You can put him in a bowl like this and kind of just let him fall down a little bit while you bake him, okay? And then he's just gonna be a sweet little dish, like a little shallow dish, right? Um, you can flop him back out there. You could do him over the bottom of the dish, okay? And that's gonna give you a little bit more depth. Do it like that. Do it over the bottom of a muffin tin. Um, you could do it over the bottom of, you know, another oven-proof anything that you have. And that's just gonna kind of give him a nice little form. Okay, you could do that. Or my little magic ring trick here. You can drop him down in drop them down in a ring, the mason jar lid, and that'll just kind of make him stand up, give him like a nice little drop to it. And I use these a lot with air dry clay. If you're ever doing like um, 
something with air dry clay, the paper clay, something like that. Um, these little muffin tin, or not muffin tin, these mason jar rings are great because they allow some air to get through to the bottom too. So that's always nice. So yeah, I'm just gonna leave him like that. I, I do kind of like the way that these rings, I like the shape that it gives them. Um, so I'm gonna leave mine in this little ring and I'm gonna bake him like that. Fun tip, um, Tom, if you can throw the bowl picture up one more time. After, I know I left these edges a little bit raw, a little bit gritty um, on this little bowl that I have, but if you look at this image I have of the bowls that we've done here before, you will see they are gold around the edges. You can paint some gold paint around the edges, um, throw a little bit of glitter, gold glitter on top of those. Everything's better with glitter. Um, I personally think that the uh, little edges with gold and glitter are beautiful. So if you have dirty little raw edges like that, it cleans them up and makes them look really cute. Kind of like, you know, like the geode faux look. Um, but yeah, that's the bowl. They're just super easy, super simple. If you have rubber stamps at home, you can always stamp um, like an image into these polymer clay pieces, these little trinket dishes and have a cool recess in there. And when you, if you paint um, on top of that little recess and then wipe the paint out, the paint will stay in those grooves. I'll show you that technique sometime too. After you fire it, do that after, after you bake it. You're not firing anything. You don't have a kiln, but you, after you bake it. Um, and then we're left with all this happy goodness, right? What are we going to do with this? Let's make some beads, okay? So I'm going to take a little piece of what I've got here, and I'm just going to roll it into a ball, okay? And you're going to feel that it's kind of like a little crackly, and that's okay. We're just going to roll these into sweet little balls keep rolling until you get it but you don't want to overwork it okay if you like overwork it and mush 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 it it's going to turn into gray or brown so make the little ball and then take your toothpick or whatever tool you have and start to make a little opening okay so we're going to take the little toothpick guy for me it's a little clay tool and we're going to poke in and we're going to make a little opening okay Hopefully it reaches through to the other side of the bead and you can poke through and open that opening back up on the other side, okay? Make that tiny opening. That is gonna be really hard to get a string through. So we're gonna broaden that. We're gonna use our little bamboo skewer or our chopstick or whatever, and we are gonna kind of poke that hole through to the other side, okay? Doop to doop to doop. There you have it. It's a bead. And if you have the wooden skewers, um, the bamboo sticks, chopsticks, whatever you have, um, for me, I'm gonna put mine on a bamboo skewer. You can bake them right on that. It helps them um, to stay, to keep the hole um, while you're transitioning them over to the oven. Um, make sure you smooth out any little areas, but I'm just gonna keep mine right here on this little stick and I'm gonna make another one. A couple more questions about baking. Yeah, yeah. Confirming the temperature. The temperature is on your package, okay? If they lost their package. If you lost your package, I believe it's 275. Yeah. Um, 275. 275 15. for 15 minutes per quarter inch. So you're going to need to bake your bowls and your beads probably separate or take your bowls out before your beads are done. These beads, so we're looking at the thickness here, okay? So the thickness of this guy is going to be, Tom, are we overhead or are we... If we're overhead, so the thickness of where this hole is to the outside, that's going to be a full quarter inch plus. So he's going to need at least 15 minutes, if not 20, right? Um, but this guy, he's only an eighth of an inch. He doesn't even need 15 minutes. So he needs eight minutes, um, but pull him out and then leave these cooked for the other, you know, 12 minutes, whatever it takes. So it depends on the size of your bead too. But remember, it's per quarter inch of thickness of your clay, not the overall size. So this is not a four inch piece. We're talking just the thickness of the clay itself. Two more questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They wanna know if, somebody wants to know if you're, you bake them in the bowl. You can, if it's an oven safe bowl and you choose to put your, to drop yours down in the bowl, totally. You can bake it that way. Um, 
If you're baking it over the bowl, you can bake it over the bowl too, if you're doing it in the ring. But yeah, I like to keep, because these are so thin, watch when I take this guy out. Say I'm sitting him on my pan, okay? After about three minutes, he's gonna be like, oh, he's gonna be a pancake, and then you've just baked yourself a really cool pancake. So yes, we're keeping them over the bowl, or you know, whatever way you like, try it out. It's gonna be more deep if you bake it over the bowl, it's going to be more subtle, a, a little light, you know, a little light, shallow guy if you do it inside the bowl. And then you really just decide what way you like the way it looks, where it stands up. Okay? And then the last question is, yeah, yeah. do they need to spray oil in the bowl before they lay it in there? No. No. This is this polymer clay is oil. It has oil in it, so it, it shouldn't stick. Um, I mean, if you bake it and then... You know, try to take a gloved hand and kind of like remove it from, I mean, don't, definitely do not press this down hard onto the bowl, okay? If you took this little clay guy and you smashed this onto the bowl and it was stuck to the bowl, it will bake onto that glass. Um, you can actually bake polymer clay onto glass things that way, but we're just draping it ever so gently. We can do it really, you know, really gently. Um, you can even put wax paper between that. Remember the wax paper might leave some little like impressions in your clay, but really gently just over the bowl. We don't want to squish it on there. That's a great question. Yeah, Jen had a good idea where well, you end up making coasters. <laughs> you do make it. Yeah, you can make coasters too. Coasters are actually fun. If you, um, again, with those um, stamps, you can take like mo letter stamps and do monograms. Um, you could do, you know, little trinket dishes with your name in them. You can stamp all sorts of things in, carve all sorts of things in. Yours looks awesome. I love it. Just wait till you see the inside. Oh, let's see it. Oh, are you going to leave yours over like this so it has a fan, like, fringy edges? Oh, Ooh, look I at like Haley's. It. Hang on. Hang on. I'm going to show you. And then she's going to... See? If you take it off the bowl, it gets flat again. But she's got these really cool little fringy edges. So cool. And you can get these little, like, you know, flowery little flute edges there. Very cool. Love it, girl. All right. Back to beads. Any other questions? Well, we were, any other bowl questions? Any new bead questions now that we've started beads? Not you, yet. Can, you can get these really cool little swirls through there. Um, if you've got little cracks, just smooth them out because whatever has a little crack in it now will definitely have a crack in it um, when you, after baking it. You guys, you can throw, I don't know if I should say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> If your parents allow glitter in your house, you can roll some of these beads in glitter too. Glitter on polymer clay is fun for me in a controlled environment. <laughs> okay. All right, this guy, I stabbed it with the little toothpick thing is what you might have similar to start the hole and then now I'm poking it through that guy, and I'm going to put it on my little skewer. Do, do, do. Super fun. I had some questions about classes for next week. Next week's classes, um, I was going to talk about those at the end, and I will again, but I'll talk about them now too. Next week, we are live Tuesday and Thursday, okay, because I'm finishing up all that content and trying to get everything together. Tuesday, we are doing a watercolor um firefly jar we're gonna watercolor a jar with some fireflies in it it's gonna be super cute so that's tuesday thursday we are gonna use these infinite amounts of toilet paper tubes that we have and we're gonna make a cool little koi fish a little toilet paper goldfish koi fish whatever you want him to be he's gonna be a toilet paper tube fish he's cute as heck so i really <laughs> we're gonna make him and paint him so that's that's thursday so tuesday and thursday we've got We've got some live tutorials for you. And do you have a tip for someone who only has white clay today? Yeah. Make whatever you want to make and then paint it when you're done. So you could also take a little bit of acrylic paint and um, try mixing some acrylic paint in with the white and see how that turns out. Um, you know, I don't, I don't really know about, I don't really know about baking the acrylic paint, how, I would have, 
I don't know. I would have to look at like yeah, research that, probably, but might not I don't be, know. Maybe not making it strong. Yeah, I'm just thinking. I don't know about VOCs because you know the the odor um, and the chemicals with acrylic are so low. I don't think it would be an issue. I, mean, I definitely wouldn't throw oil paint into it. Oh my gosh! Or um, you know, watercolor might might be a really subtle color with it, but you could try. Try the things. That's what I do. I play with everything. I just try. I, I, you know, mix up some stuff, see if it works. I mean, Tommy, how many, how many bombed projects do you think I have? I mean, I just, I Quite started, I started one on Tuesday, hated it, threw it away halfway through. I was like, this is horrible. <laughs> yeah. Lots. I mean, I do, I, I start things and don't like it and change all the time. What's the worst that you can do? Waste a piece of paper, waste a little bit of one of your products. But yeah, just try. I mean, take a little bit, try a little bit, experiment with it, um, see if the paint works and thins it down or, uh, you know, colors it and doesn't thin it down to where it's too runny. And then uh, see if it bakes okay. Maybe try adjusting your bake times if it if it needs to be. Just experiment with it. Artists, we're, we're a little on the science end too, so. All right, this little bead that I made, I'm going to throw him on the skewer. Looks like an egg. But yeah, these are fun beads. Um, if you wanted to make a flat bead, so like me, if I wanted to make earrings or something like that, I would roll it up flat like I did with my bowl. And always remember, your little uh, rolly guy. Did I lose my towel? I lost my towel. No, oh, he's over here. Your little rolly guy, he collects... Um, whatever color that you were just rolling out. I mean, whether you really see it on there or not, there's always going to be some residue. So wipe that little rolling pin off. So there are tiny little cookie cutters that you can buy in the polymer clay section that I like to play with, but a lot of times I just like to cut my own shapes too. So you can just roll it kind of thin. You want it to be thin just like the bowl was. And say I wanted to do like a little raindrop earring, like I love so much, my drop earrings. I would just roll it thin and then cut them out. I'd probably use a better knife than this, but. Kind of make your shape, cut them out kind of thin. And then if you have like dangle earring findings, you can put your hole through the top, okay? Just kind of stab down with a toothpick, make that little hole. And then you can put your, put your jump ring through there and then hook it to some dangly earrings or whatever. But that's how you would make some fun earrings too. You can make a pair, you could make a matching pair, you could make a not matching pair. I like a good, uh, coordinating pair like uh I have some Disney earrings that are like Mickey's hand and Mickey's pants like Mickey's shorts on one and Mickey's glove on the other um what other ones do I have I have like mismatched ones I can't remember I have a couple I have a wall of earrings in my bathroom it's like these like chicken wire things that um hold all my earrings so I have I have a quite extensive earring collection so yeah, you would just bake that guy and then you'd put your jump ring through there and then put your, you know, little earring back, little fish hook guy through there. And that would be, you know, how you do that. You'd probably do it with the more marbled if that was all you were going to do with it. You could paint on it too. How you doing over here, girl? Making Good. your beads? Good. Yeah. All right. So that's that, guys. That is what we have. Any other questions about that, miss? Um, no questions about the beads, but they do cool. want to know how many, uh, for the toilet paper rolls, how many you think you're going to need for next week. Each fish is going to take a roll. So just just the empty cardboard roll. You don't need toilet paper. Just the empty roller. Um, the fish is just going to be one. He's going to be one little roll. Um, you could make a whole sea of fish if you would like a, a shoal. A shoal of fish, as David Attenborough would say. <laughs> um, with as many as you want. One rolly per the fish. Um, so, yeah, next week... We'll be back. 
I can't wait to see what you guys made today, though. Make sure you use that hashtag, made with McHarper, to show me what you did. Next week, we will be doing those fish on Thursday, but on Tuesday, we'll be doing the watercolor jar tutorial. I am going to draw you guys out a jar for those of you that um, might want some, might want a template for the jar. I'll go ahead and um, draw out a jar for you guys, and I'll put that up on Monday so that you have time to print it off, and you can do that cool graphite transfer technique um, or use the graphite sheets, but you guys can get that jar onto your watercolor paper if you would like some guidance with that. If you feel any bit of confidence about drawing your own jar, I would love for you to draw your own jar, but I'm going to put that out there just for people that might want a little helping hand and a little extra confidence and encouragement to do that project. Um, the ways you can continue to help us, Venmo at Tabitha-McClung and PayPal.me slash Manor. That is continuing to help us while we are closed and putting together our art cupboard and helping the people that help us. So... I think that's all I've got for you guys today. I hope everybody has a really super awesome weekend. Um, I will show you the prizes one more time. Miss, did you have another question? One question, are these little bowls food safe? Um, you know, anything with polymer clay, I would say not necessarily food safe. You'd have to look at the manufacturer's website to find out for sure. I use them as trinket dishes. Um, like when I play with clay and I throw, take my rings off and throw them in something, if I'm you know, making meatloaf, meatballs, washing my hands, stuff like that. I use them for trinket dishes, put little things in, um, you know, tiny little things, hold, hold my earrings because, you know, important things. So, yeah, that's what I use. Um, I almost forgot to show you guys the prizes for the week one more time. You guys have through Sunday night. Um, Monday morning we pick the winners. So you have through Sunday night to continue to do, use your entries for the week with the hashtag made with McHarper. And this week, Missy from Happy Groundhog Studio is giving away Happy Kitty. And that is going to be this week's plushie prize. Um, this week's little McHarper Manor tease prize. We have the family of bears. So we have Mama Bear. We have Papa Bears. Papas, we didn't forget about you. We have Little Bears. So if your winner chooses a little bear or a papa bear or a mama bear for you. And we have baby bears, onesies, with a little baby bear on them. They're so sweet. So you, our winner gets to pick whichever bear they like from our family of bears and collection. And is it just for the projects this week or is it for any, any project? They can, they can enter any project they like. It's the hashtags collected this week from the Made with McHarper hashtag. So that's just this week's prize. Just go back and watch any old videos. Watch an old video. Do missed, whatever you want to do it. if you've missed something that you think you could just knock out of the park and win that prize with. Um, you know, there's really no rhyme or reason. We pick we pick our favorite just because it speaks to us on some level. Um, it may be your effort. It may be how you've grown as an artist. It may just be the color choice you chose. We, The heart wants what the heart wants. And we really don't know exactly why um, we choose the ones we do. But um, yeah, just continue sharing those with us. We're super excited to see them as always. Um, also, another fun thing I'm going to throw up for you guys um, later this evening, tomorrow morning, whenever I remember, um, you know, Wednesday, I didn't even remember hit post. So let's see. But I on the news this morning, it's International Bat Appreciation Day. All right. The little bats. Here in Ohio, we have the little brown bat. He's a little endangered guy. But I taught our news anchors at Fox 19 how to draw this little bat. So I'll throw him up for you guys to, to maybe draw a little bat friend. Um, so yeah, a little step-by-step -step tutorial on that. That'll be a fun thing to keep you cruising through the weekend. Um, but yeah, lots of fun things. Um, we'll have more info on the subscription stuff. Um, I am cranking them out. I only have one project left uh, out of, you know, the six projects, the eight tutorials. I only have one left to, uh, to get out and knock out. So I'm so excited to have all this content together for you guys. Um, if you need information on that, again, go to mcharpermanor.com. Wait for that pop-up to come up and enter all your information for the subscription. Any other questions? Anybody Anybody got anything out there? No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You're really excited. Oh. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us oh. how to put the earrings on with the clips? Oh, that's a whole jewelry making yeah. tutorial. You have to apply it. You, you look can up. look look up um, a YouTube video on, um, you know, attaching 
uh, hook earrings to jump rings. Basically, I mean, you're just going to need some small needle nose pliers, put it all together. That's That would be a whole other tutorial. So you can figure it out. I have faith in you. You're you're going to do it. You're going to do it <laughs> potato well. Potato bat, Nicole said. Potato <laughs> bat. He is a potato bat, really. That's how I had... That's how I have the news anchor start with him. A little, a little start tato. With a potato. Start with a potato. All right, guys. Well, thanks so much for hanging with us today. You guys have a great weekend. We are going to have some fun things that we sprinkle throughout the weekend for you. So uh, keep checking back on the Facebook page and check things out. Follow us on Instagram. Um, hopefully, if you want to watch some tutorials, you head over to our YouTube account, Made with McCarper. And we will see you back on Tuesday at 1 p.m. for our watercolor firefly jar tutorial. If you need a template for that, it'll be up on Monday. Thanks so much, guys. Have a great weekend. Take care of yourselves and each other, and we will see you soon. Bye.